Hello everyone. My name is Arun. I'm solutions architect with Rexpace Technologies. And these are my views. Today we are going to design or understand the designing for Azure SQL DB. As you see on the screen, these are uh, three deployment options that we have for SQL. Uh, let me highlight uh, these. We have SQL Server on Azure VM, we have Manager Instance, and we do have Azure SQL DB. SQL on VM is, uh, is something that we, uh, we deploy a SQL server on a virtual machine, like the old ways or the legacy ways. And this is best for migrations and applications requiring operating system level access. Then we have managed instance right here. This is a uh, Pass service, of course, but we need a virtual network to deploy this. And this is best for lift and shift migrations to the cloud because managed instance is almost 99% compatible with SQL on VM. And you wouldn't face uh, much issues, blocker or any limitations. Well, there are a few that we will cover when we'll talk about managed instance in uh, next video or upcoming video so the third one is the uh, hero for this particular video because it is based on the azure sql db and <clears throat> this is best for modern applications it's also good for hyperscale and serverless requirement again you can think that as a requirement for modern applications right so Azure SQL database and Azure SQL manage instance both ensures 99.99% availability and both are pass services. The difference is for managed instance, you need to deploy a virtual network for Azure SQL, you don't. Though you can hook it up through private endpoint, that's a different story. So in this video, we will explore Azure SQL, hence designed for Azure SQL DB is the header or heading. So let's put the Azure SQL in perspective first. Azure SQL database is uh, past deployment, as I said a couple of times already, that abstracts both the OS and the SQL server instance for us to use. It is highly scalable, intelligent, relational DB, uh, built for, for, for the cloud with the industry's highest availability SLA. Okay, so these are some common features of all the past services, to be honest. SQL DB is also the only deployment option that supports scenarios that require very large databases, currently up to 100 TB terabyte. Auto scaling for un predictable workloads. That's the another scenario and you can, yes, you can call it serverless. Now let's see uh, some key features and differentiators for this Azure database. And I have this uh, screenshot with me, which will help us to understand it. Let me expand it a little more. Okay, right here. All right, so let, let me get my highlighter and we will uh, go ahead and talk about it. So <clears throat> these are, are the few key features that this uh, Azure SQL provides, which is we can have a single database or you can utilize the elastic pool. We'll, we have covered these things. Uh, in other videos, but yeah, we'll talk about Elastic Pool uh, a little bit in a few minutes. So 
I already said uh, about this hyperscale thing, uh, very large databases. So that's the feature, that's the attribute of Azure SQL. It, it also gives you serverless compute. It is fully managed and it supports private link, which was not there earlier, but now it is, and it is highly available. These are some key features that we have uh, covered like or shared in till now a couple of times. So, so that it will stay in your mind or it will cement the knowledge, right? Anyways, uh, the differentiator. 99.995% of availability, all right? And this, this uh, snippet I have borrowed from the Microsoft. So, because I was coming with this 99.99, but this says 99.99995%. Industry only business continuity SLA with five second RPU and 30 seconds RTO. So you can utilize this particular uh, service where you have to achieve this RP and RTO for your DR purpose. Now, price performance leader for mission critical workloads. Well, it is it it it, it will give you a good performance in the less or, or cheaper price as compared to the other cloud provider. These are some differentiator why you should opt for Azure SQL. Now, and here it says, uh, when you have to choose when there is a challenge or there is a requirement for a customer who wants to build the modern applications with the highest uptime and predictable performance. Now we know, uh, let me erase these, these will disturb us later. So now we know, let me remove that. Apart from all the features that we have discussed, there is one more interesting feature we, which uh, we should talk about that I mentioned even in the key features is Elastic Pool. So Elastic Pool uh, enables you to buy a set of compute and storage resources that are shared among all the databases in the pool. Each database can use the resource they need within the limits you set depending upon the uh, current load. So. This is uh, one of the way you can deploy the Azure SQL. Like I said, like it says single database or Elastic Pool. Uh, Elastic Pool will definitely help you to optimize your cost and utilize all your compute and storage to the maximum. Now, <clears throat> it's time to analyze your uh, purchasing model. So we got two purchasing models here. Let me expand this. Azure SQL DB has two purchasing models, as you can see here in the snippet, again, from the Microsoft. Uh, one is DTU model, which is the old or legacy one, and another one is vCore model. Well, vCore stands for virtual cores and lets you choose the number of vCores, which gives you greater control over the compute and storage resources that you create and, and pay for. DTU is a database transition uh, unit and it is, it is the combination or combined measure of compute storage and IO resources. DTU model is simple pre-configured purchase option. Uh, this is unavailable on SQL managed instance right here. Yeah, for this, it is not available, this DT model. Now, in vCore, serverless model. Serverless model is a compute tier for single database in Azure SQL DB. It automatically scales compute based on workload demand and bills only for the amount of compute used. 
the v core based model is recommended because it allows you to independently select compute and storage resources the dtu based model is a bundled measure of compute storage and io resources as we said uh, not independent the vco model also allows you to use hybrid benefit for sql server and save a lot of money or also go reserved capacity pay in advance to save money neither of these options is available in the dt model well uh i hope if you are following me then of course you could you could guess why why is that so because dto is a legacy or the old model right so let's check some recommendation D when we need to use dtu model well when you need uh, a bundled measure of uh, resources like compute storage and io and it's a simple deployment and uh, for vcore when you need the flexibility of selecting compute and storage resources independently we can also think uh, with a different perspective as why vcore came into the picture when dtu was functioning pretty okay well it's because people or customers wanted the visibility of the configuration for the usage we could also think uh, uh, by giving them the uh, choice to choose it gives them freedom to utilize the benefit of past services and also choose their own configuration now <clears throat> these are the uh, purchasing model these are the two purchasing model and now it's time to talk about the service tier there are different uh, service tiers available so we need to see what all service tiers are there so based on performance availability and storage needs azure offers three database service tiers on the basis of performance main thing availability and storage so what are these service tiers well these are general purpose business critical and hyperscale service tier which is unavailable for managed instance so managed instance also has gp and business critical but hyperscale is limited to the azure sql database only now let's see some difference in the architecture for general purpose and business critical so this is our general purpose let me expand this a little bit so <clears throat> with general purpose service tier the primary replica uses locally attached ssd locally attached ssd for the temp db the data and log files are stored in the premium storage uh, service azure premium storage service this is storage account yeah the backup files are then stored in the azure standard storage you see the main file in the premium for the performance and the backup are in the standard cost optimization when failover occurs the azure service fabric will identify a node with spare capacity and spin up a new sql server instance the database files will then be attached recovery will be run and gateways will be updated to point applications to the new node right so everything is stayed in the storage account except the temp db and these nodes are running in case one fails uh, then it will fail over to another node and these files would be attached back to the node which is running so this is again this is the highly available uh, feature of general purpose that's how they do it but the best way of doing highly available thing is you'll see is in business critical so let's check what is in the business critical so this is the business critical as you can see business critical architecture is meant for mission critical applications that need low latency and mini <clears throat> now business critical is like deploying an always on availability group 
behind the scenes, the way the data and log files are stored differs from GP in that they are stored on the direct attached SSD. See, this is primary endpoint here. You have read and write, and this is where the SSD is attached. And this is an always on. We have three more second replica, and you can utilize these as in read only as well. In business critical scenario, the data and log files are all running on the direct attached SSD, which significantly reduce the network latency. And in general purpose, it was premium storage. So in this architecture group, there are three second replicas. If any type of failure occurs, failing over to a second replica is fast because the replica already exists and has the data attached to it through SSD. We do have options to utilize read-only replicas as well for the read request uh, to balance the load. Now, this is something very interesting, which is the architecture of hyperscaler. Now, hyperscale is a fully managed service that adapts to changing requirement uh, by rapidly scaling storage up to 100 TB. Flexible cloud native architecture allows storage to grow as needed and enables you to back up data almost instantaneously and restore your data in minutes, regardless of the size of the data operations. Okay. Well, as you can see, hyperscale provides fast database restores, rapid scale outputs and scale ups. A hyperscale database grows as needed and you are built only for the capacity you use, right? And this image here illustrates the different type of nodes in hyperscale architecture. The compute node is where the relational engine lives and where language query and transaction processing occurs. Compute nodes have SSD based uh, caches, which is uh, this RBPEX, resilient buffer pool extension. There are one or more secondary compute nodes like this that act as hot standby nodes for failover purpose, as well as act as a read-only compute node, just like in uh, business critical. Now, there are uh, page servers, you can see. Page servers are systems representing a scaled out storage engine. The job of a page server is to serve database pages out to the compute nodes on demand. Page servers also maintain covering SSD based cache to enhance performance. The log, the log service accepts log records from the primary compute replica, persists them in the durable cache and forwards the log records to the rest of the compute. Right here, you can see the log service. From here, they are forwarding here to the other compute. In this way, all data changes from the primary computer replica are propagated through the log service to all the secondary computer replicas and page servers. Now, this is a bit highlight of the architecture. Now, let's see the recommendation which one we, we got to choose at what scenario, right? This is the main purpose of the design. Uh, because when you design, you need to choose. You need to choose the right SKU. You need to choose the right uh, uh, service tier, right purchasing model. So yeah, when you need balanced compute and storage option for your workloads, always go with the general purpose. When there is no specific requirement for uh, low latency or highly scalable storage. But if there is a requirement for low latency, then of course, and go with the business critical. It gives you highest resiliency to failures for business applications as well. You have seen the architecture, right? And when you need highly scalable storage and have read scale requirement for business workload, definitely hyperscale. Nobody, no other option gives you this. So, well, that's it about uh, Azure SQL, designing for Azure SQL. We have seen different deployment options. We talked about the features and why we need to choose Azure SQL, when we need to use Azure SQL, some uh, purchasing models, then the architecture of different SKUs and the recommendations. Well, thank you for watching.